fixed income securities. There are several fixed income securities that we can include into our financial portfolio. These include CDs, certificate of deposits, treasuries, agencies, municipals, corporates, and high yield corporates. Each of these fixed income securities serve a specific purpose and may or may not be suitable for all uh, investors. So a CD is a certificate of deposit and they are actually time deposits. It's very much like a savings account that has a time and that gives you or pays you an interest. However, you cannot withdraw your money before that time is up. If your financial institution is covered under the FDIC, then you may be covered with an insurance, a deposit insurance up to $250,000. Now, CDs may be simple bank accounts, but you could also buy CDs from other financial institutions than the one that's over your, you know, in your neighborhood. Um, you're basically buying a, a, a product and this is offered by several different financial institutions. And once you buy a CD, you're locked into it. It's a fixed income security. You pay money into it, you get your money at the maturity and you receive interest. I pulled up some screenshots from a brokerage company and if you take a look at this, you can see that they have coupons and maturities, and then they have the issuer uh, description, whether it's callable, and they have the QCIP numbers. And QCIP number is very much like a security number, very similar to a social security number for a person or a symbol for a stock. A QCIP number is a identifier for an individual fixed income security. Uh, you'll see a price for a CD, and then your APY and your yield to uh, versed and yield to maturity uh, actual returns. And then how many uh, of those are available and what is your minimum buy-in? And then you could you know, buy these through your brokerage companies and open these accounts with these individual uh, financial institutions. Um, the one that I pulled out has uh, you know, very currently you know, decent interest rates, decent yields, uh, very similar to uh, U.S. Treasuries, actually. Uh, however, you have to note that risk comes with return or return comes with risk. Higher the yield, higher the risk. So I don't know specifically about the, um, you know, whether these individual banks are covered by FDIC or not. Uh, but however, with the given market conditions, these yield to maturities are not all that bad. One thing about the CDs though, once you buy in, you're locked in, meaning you will probably pay a significant penalties to get your money out. And, and therefore, if it is a um, you know, one year maturity or two year maturity or five years or 10 years, it's really hard to get your money out if you need your money before that maturity date. So be very careful when you're buying, buying into a CDs. And you are exposed to a interest rate risk, meaning once you buy into a CD, you're locked into that interest rate. And you know, like for instance, this one, if you buy it at 2.74%, uh, you're basically locked into it. If in the meantime, market interest rates raise, um, you, there's nothing you can do about it. You're locked into this until that maturity and you will be losing your opportunity cost. That's the definition of uh, market risk or interest rate risk. So the next one that we're gonna talk about are the treasuries or the next fixed income security that we're gonna talk about are the treasuries. Now treasuries are uh, bonds or promissory notes issued by the US treasury. And at the US uh, treasury, we have daily auctions that go through every day. And then we have different maturities, one month, two months, three months, six months, one year, five years, and so on and so forth, up to 30 years. Now, these are considered to be, it's at least the first three, the one month, two months, and three months, are considered to be uh, risk-free in uh, financial literature. Um, U.S. never defaulted on, on its um, payment promise. And based on the market liquidity, available for these uh, bonds or notes, 
um, these are considered to be the lowest risk that you could possibly or potentially have. So as of this screenshot, November the 20th, 2018, one month treasury yield is 2.23% per annum. That's an annualized rate. And the 30 year is 3.31% uh, yield. And the yield curve is the curvature of this and then the two months and the three months and one year, the two year, three years and so on and so forth. And the only reason that somebody would actually buy into a 30 year bond with a 3.31 is because that personal institution believes that the interest rates will not be as high uh, going forward. So the treasury bonds or notes are uh, promissory notes. They simply have a payment promise, very much like the CDs. Um, you pay a certain amount of money and then you will get your face value. So in each bond, you have the current price, very much like this CDs had right here. And then you have a face amount, which you're going to receive at the maturity. Now, during this time, the bond or the CD may pay you a coupon, which is a, a periodic payment, and a coupon may or may not exist. So some bonds will pay a coupon and some bonds will not. Some CDs will have a coupon and some CDs will not. And the coupon payment is a percentage off the face, and you could have as you know different frequency as possible. You could have a monthly frequency, quarterly, six months, uh, annual, and so on and so forth. Now, the yield is your net earnings. Beginning from time that you paid into this until the time that you receive your face value. It includes your discounting as of now and the coupon payments that you're going to receive while you're holding the asset. Now, it used to be that in the good old days, you could have a bond uh, referred to as a bearer bond, which whoever holds the bond would be the owner. But nowadays we have registered bonds and bonds will be registered to your name or to your brokerage account's name. Now, the CD is the most available kind and most accessible kind to everyone. Any financial institution will offer it. However, once you buy into a CD, you're locked in for the period of time. So while many of the financial institutions offer the FDIC insurance up to $250,000, uh, your financial institution may not. And just because you bought into a CD doesn't mean that you're immune from liquidity or, or market interest rate risk. Um, the nice side of it is it's very accessible, it's very easy. The downside of it is you know, you're locked in and you have to pay a penalty to get out. Now with the treasuries, you have the full faith of the US government to pay this. So while the FDIC is a private corporation with the backing of the US government, the treasury is the US government. And once you buy a treasury, you can always sell in the secondary market and get out. Most of the time, if you have a one month, two months or three months, your losses will be either very limited or if at all. So having a treasury bond is considered to be the least risky investment you could do in fixed income securities. Longer the maturity, higher the likelihood of uh, market risk or interest rate risk. And therefore, if you invest in a 30 year bond and if the yields in the market for comparable periods of maturities increase, then the price of your bond will decrease. Keep this in mind. When you buy into a bond, you're buying a product. That product will pay you X amount of dollars in the future. And you're locked into it. If it is a 10-year bond, you're locked into it for 10 years. Same bond will be traded in the market by you or by others. But it is that specific bond. Now, if the new bonds, new ones, that have the same 10-year maturity offer higher yields because the interest rates are now higher than your specific bond that you bought earlier will lose value simply because your bond, that specific bond, 
will have a lower year yield compared to the newly issued ones. This is the market risk. And therefore, longer the maturity, higher the risk of investing in a fixed income security. Now, agencies are the bonds that are issued by US um, agencies. Now, they're usually considered uh, to bear lower default risks since they are US agencies. However, the yields are usually a little higher than ordinary treasuries because they're agencies, but the difference is usually very small. So as you can see, the ratings will be AA plus or AAA, and then uh, your, the prices will be at a slight discount, while your yields will be slightly higher than the, C well, slightly lower than the CDs, but slightly higher than the treasuries. Now, the next one is the municipals. Now notice, these are fixed income securities. CDs are offered through banks, financial institutions, and they're not traded like bonds or like stocks. You could actually, you are actually buying a certificate of deposit from a financial institution and you're locked in with that financial institution. When you buy a bond through your brokerage company, that bond will look and appear in your brokerage account. Now, a treasury bond is an, a bond, a fixed income security, a promissory note issued by the US Treasury. Agencies are the promissory notes or bonds issued by the US agencies. Now, the municipals are issued by the municipalities. Now, these could be quite high risk or quite safe. It, it depends on your credit rating of the municipality that, that issued them. Now notice, a lot of the municipal bonds will have a tax exemption, meaning that any income that you make, um, you will be exempt from paying income taxes on those. Uh, not all, but most of them. Now, the issue now is that this is a very nice sales pitch for uh, brokerage companies and for investment advisors to get investors to invest in a municipal bonds. However, the tax exemption is intended not to save investors money, but to reduce the cost of debt for municipalities. Meaning, while you may be saving from paying taxes on your income on these instruments, your yield on these bonds will be lower compared to a comparable risk, comparable maturity, uh, non-municipal bonds. Therefore, that lower yield will be equal to the tax exemption benefit that you will get by owning these bonds. Therefore, just because a municipal bond is tax exempt does not mean that you're saving a whole lot of money. In fact, you may not be saving anything at all because you will be getting a lower yield for the given or the same level of risk with comparable uh, risk and comparable um, maturity bonds issued by non-municipals. So these are some of the examples. Uh, you can see the coupons, you can see the maturities, uh, the prices. When a bond sells above 100, you will find that it will be referred to as a premium bond because it actually has a more than $100 price, a premium bond. When it sells for less than, I think that we had a few on the, um, right here, on the agencies, uh, this is referred to as a discount bond. So a discount bond is a bond that sells less than 100 and a premium bond is a bond that sells over $100. Now, the next category is the corporates. Now, these are the bonds that are issued by corporations. They may be US or non-US corporations. They're just issued and traded in the US. They could have many different um, ratings. They could be junk or they could be investment grade or premium. Now, notice that they will sell very much like the agencies or the treasuries. They will have very similar uh, rating schemes or scales, and their pricing will be very similar to, um, or, or the methodology for pricing will be very similar to treasuries and agencies and municipals. Now, notice previously, when we were looking at the agencies, we had certain one line, two lines, and three lines of different prices. Now, with the corporations, you have more of these. So what does this mean? Now, bonds are issued 
by individual issuers, corporations, municipals, governments, and so on and so forth. So Caterpillar, Citigroup, Ford, so on and so forth. And then there's an underwriting company who actually gets these bonds and sells them to the selling financial institutions. Now, these selling financial institutions, the sell side, are the brokers, market makers, uh, brokerage companies, wholesalers, but there is no fixed um, exchange, a bond exchange, like a stock exchange. Therefore, you have market makers and institutions and dealers who are, or wholesalers, who are buying and selling these bonds. So the first line is a, a person or an institution who is willing to buy or trade this specific bond at that yield at that price. There are 19 of them available and the minimum trade size is five. Now notice, it, although this is 101, this is actually 1,010 and 70 cents. So if you were to buy one of them, you would pay $1,010 and 70 cents. If you, and, and the minimum trade on this one is five. So this is a minimum of $5,000 and change of a trade. The second trader now is trading at a bit slightly higher price at 101 and 244, which makes the yield slightly lower. There are $15,000 worth available and the minimum trade is 15,000. The third trader now is 101 870, slightly higher price and a slightly lower yield because of it. Now there are 500 of them available and you have to trade minimum of, of 10. So the minimum investment is $10,187. Now uh, the next one is high yield corporates. High yield corporates are uh, the ones that are referred to as, as junk bonds. Um, now these have lower ratings and their prices will be a discount or a premium. However, the yields will be significantly higher. So for instance, California Res Corp, I don't know what that is, but it has a yield to maturity of 10%. There are 50 of them available and the minimum trade size is five. These are higher risk. They have a higher default risk, which means that come the maturity, you may not receive the face value or at any time until the maturity, you may not receive uh, the face value or you may get news that says the company will not honor their promise and will never pay you back. And therefore you could actually potentially lose all your money invested in these instruments. The higher the return, higher the risk. So by investing in a high return uh, bonds of any kind, um, you, you are taking a, a significant risk. Now, a lot of the times in the brokerage companies, you're going to see that um, high yield corporates will include other governments, emerging markets, uh, higher risk government bonds. And then under the corporates, you will also find very similarly other governments bonds but they will be most of the time euro bonds issued in US dollars. So you could potentially invest in a bond in, you know, issued by England or Germany or, or France, uh, Japan, and so on and so forth. And then when it comes to high yield securities, uh, you may invest in bonds issued by Argentina, Brazil, uh, South Africa, and, and so on and so forth. So the corporate side includes the international government bonds and, and most of the time issued in, in US dollars. Thank you.